I mean, one of my favorite stories that I detailed in the Partner Hacker Handbook is, and this is why I'm really tight with Jill Rowley. So Jill Rowley, queen of, you know, she invented social selling and she does all sorts of great stuff, big following. Um, I signed a, an exclusive alliance deal with Marketo. And it was the first time Marketo had ever done that. And I remember going in person to San Francisco to meet with Jill and the SVP of partnerships. So Jill, Jill was at the time the chief growth officer at Marketo. Um, and then I had the SVP of partnerships from Marketo there. And um, I showed up to that meeting and I'd never signed an exclusive alliance deal. Not with a, you know, public company, not with a multi-billion dollar company. So I brought Bobby Napletonia with me. Bobby Napletonia was the, you know, credited with, not, I, I can't say inventing the app exchange, but let's say scaling the app exchange under Benioff and Salesforce's enterprise channel. He definitely was the architect behind like the Accenture partnership, right? And Blue Wolf, you know, all, all of these big SI partnerships that Salesforce got. And I showed up to that meeting and Jill Rowley looked at me like, what the fuck is Bobby Napletonia doing here, right? <laughs> I brought someone with, and he wasn't even on my payroll, wasn't on my staff, was nothing. He just independently showed up. I got him to show up with me. Why? Because this guy has signed more big alliance deals than anyone. This is the biggest partnership in the world to me. So I brought someone who'd been to my promised land. And at the end of that meeting, guess what? We signed the deal. Because you had trust. Yeah, I had someone that'd been to their promised land. Salesforce. So, and, and like to your point, though, more importantly, was somebody who not just had been there, but did it successfully could speak back to it, could look at that moment with you and say, good, bad, or otherwise, this is the reason that you should sign the dotted line. It's validation. Yeah. It, it, it's uh, Brent Adamson, who's the author of the Challenger Sale. He has some really great articles in the Harvard Business Review lately. And one of them, he talks about um, helping customers make a confident purchasing decision. So like one of the jobs of a great salesperson right now is to inspire confidence. Right. And it doesn't mean necessarily in you or what you say. It's just, it, it's not about influencing their decision. It's to help them feel confident that they are make they have all the right things to make a decision. And that's one of those pieces that's missing. It's like, this is the first time Marketo's done this. This is the first time I've done it. So why shouldn't we have someone at the table who's done it? Right. With no vested interest, by the way, in either party. Bobby had no vested interest in me or Drift and no vested interest in Marketo. So it was like an independent third party. Now, granted, he, of course, he's on my side because he's my buddy, like at that point, or I'd say mentor, right? Like more like mentor, right? Yeah, so kind of helping yeah. out, but like, hey, I don't want to put my reputation on the line and do a bad deal with Marketo that screws them up because then that impacts me. So they were kind of like this independent third party, so to speak. Bobby was. Yeah, but that, again, that goes back to your idea of he's been there, he's done that, he's done it well. And so you're not asking him to do it for a cost because you want him to evaluate something. You're saying, look, you know, guide me a little bit here. Give me some feedback. So, all right, what I'm thinking immediately is I'm listening to this. I don't know. It's five years from now. I find it on the internet. I'm listening to you talk and I'm going, all right, he gets it. Where do I start? Like I'm, I'm Barrett King. I just get signed up to some cool, you know, hot to trot startup. It's a SaaS platform, like the kind of traditional thing you'd expect. Right. And someone says to me, Hey man, I want you to go start a partner program. I'm like, great. Who are you working with? And they're like, nobody. Like, all right, well, where do I even start from there? Any thoughts on sort of the tactical first one to three things that I do? I have a couple opinions on this. Um, so this is one like book-ended opinion. So like siloed and separate from the other ones that I might have. So the first one is, um, so these, these are not interdependent ideas. So the first one is, I think you need to win in an ecosystem before you try and build your own. So I think this is why strategic alliances are so important. Um, and you need to be able to market with a company that's bigger than you. You need to be able to build, co-create, innovate, integrate with a company that's bigger than you. You need to be able to sell with a company that's bigger than you. And you need to be able to service with a company that's bigger than you. And that forces like kind of the cross-functional, you know, uh, interoperability and, and uh, management alignment um, with a much more narrower scope and lens because partner people tend to have starry-eyed syndrome and every partnership looks like a great partnership, but they require so much work. Um, uh, so this was the chapter that I, I, I wrote in the partner hacker handbook about strategic alliances, um, which has been my secret, like my secret, every single time I've built a program has been built on the back of a strategic alliance because I've always been the, you know, that's why the name of the podcast is partner up, partner up, right? I'm like <laughs> talking about it from the vantage point of working with people that are bigger than you, um, either in size, revenue, trust, you know, whatever it is, you're bringing some party to the table that has more than you do. So how do you win those things and then use that to attack the rest of the ecosystem? So that'd be my first thing. Um, now, granted, 
that first thing is only for entrepreneurial people, right? Like alliances is, is not a, is, is not a dumb, a dumb kid's game. Like I got lucky the first time that I like bulldozed my way to an alliance with HubSpot. Um, I really do mean bulldoze. Like, I mean, I remember getting on the phone with Brad coffee. Um, and I told him, I said, Brad, I'm going to be in less than one year. I'll have more integrations with CRM than anyone else. Um, I'll be your number one partner in terms of activations and I'll be your number one partner in terms of revenue in less than one year. You're going to buy me. And he was like, who the hell are you? <laughs> who is this guy? Why is who he so is bold? this guy? What are you talking about? And in less than one year, we were having those convos, right? And yeah, that's uh, conviction. Ventures ultimately invested in us. So yeah, that'd be that's the first conviction. Advice. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're talking conviction. about commitment exactly. and conviction and you're owning it too, which I think is important, which is really interesting to highlight in terms of the, the idea of, to your point. So go up, you know, work with the people that are already um, I think in some ways going to lay the roadmap for you. Like if I have to go and, and partner with somebody who's bigger than me, more powerful, they're in charge. I'm not. And that lays the foundation for perhaps how I could then go and ask somebody else to partner with me in return. But then bold with conviction, you made a statement there, which is, okay, in this dynamic, I'm still going to own a little bit of what I'm doing. I'm going to be a little bit, you know, in terms of empowerment, in charge of the way that we deliver value back to you larger than me organization, which speaks well Absolutely. to it. Yeah. yeah, I, I think... Um, that conviction means a, means a lot, but like uh, it's, it's called a strategic imperative for a reason. A strategic imperative implies that there's a strategic problem, right? And a strategic problem is company altering, meaning life and death, meaning if there's a strategic imperative, then that means you better win. Otherwise, you're going to die. So as a partnering professional, I've always been able to separate the good from the bad, in my opinion, on whether or not they're willing to put their career and reputation on the line, right? And how are you going to put your career and reputation on the line by saying like, I'm going to build an ecosystem. It's like, I know all six people who have, there's six of them. There's six people that have, in my opinion, legitimately created intentionally partner ecosystems from scratch, like big market cap, you know, companies. There's not that many. There's very few people that have done it. And here's the other thing. The ones that have done it, they don't ever do it again. I've yet to meet, there's not any person I'm aware of that is still in a partner position after they've done it for a company. You go on this, you know, five to 10 year run and they're like, I'm done. Yep. You know, like that, that was, was fun. insane. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. Um, so kind of the point is, is like, what else are you going to put your career on the line for? It's got to be a big win. It's got to be an alliance in my opinion. So that'd be the first thing. Um, the second thing that's independent of that, I would say, don't start with sales. Um, do not accept a position where you're measured on leads. Don't go into it. Start with success. Align yourself 100% to the customer success team and get partners and your success or services team really committed to driving joint value, whether that's with an integration or a service provider. Start with success. Or even if you can't start with success, start with marketing. Some of the best marketing I've ever done has been when there was no sales partnership and there was no integration partnership and no success partnership. It was just co-brand marketing, like Gong and Drift. Two great brand names in 2018 you're getting Dave Gerhardt and Dave Cancel with Udi and like the team over there at, you know, Gong, like anything that we marketed together was great, right? Both share the audiences. So I would say start with success or start with marketing. Don't start with sales or product. In my opinion, if you're going to, you know, where to start those two places, independent of the Alliance convo. Yep. I love it. All right. I know we're getting close to time here. So I want to hear your parting thoughts. I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm anybody in the partner ecosystem right now. And what I'm hearing more and more is what you're talking about. It's this idea that, you know, partnerships is not uh, a single department. Partnerships is not a single role. We're interconnected throughout the customer life cycle. Parting advice, guidance, thoughts, feedback, or otherwise on, you know, we talked about obviously starting by building trust with somebody bigger than me. We talked about the, the value of trust over time. A feedback and thoughts and ideas on how I build trust with my peers. Now I'm talking about turning internal. I'm building a program. I'm trying to grow this thing. And, and yet I am just one or five or whatever people. How do I build my trust internally? I mean, partnerships is made for the bold. So you have to be willing to take bets and live with the consequences either way. Um, so here's what I would say. Give value. Give first. Don't take. Like go out of your way to create stuff and help them get to where they need to go. So, I mean, give first. I mean, there's a first giver advantage. Every relationship that you have in your life came from one of two things. You helping someone without an expectation of return or someone helping you without an expectation of return. Fact. Anything else is not a relationship that you still have. 
that might be a you know contact that might be someone you know but it's not someone that you consider family or friend or partner or any of these more meaningful things so i tend to start with giving right i don't make any ass of my departments um of my leadership i give and i figure out creative ways to give that creates cross functional kind of alignment right so like being the, an ideas guy that isn't just an ideas guy that can go through to execute, like um, find out what the most important things are at your company um, and find the closest possible partners or even influencers or community members or cus- basically people that aren't in your, in your walls. So instead of going to market, you can build in market, you can live in market and pull them towards those opportunities um, and give first. Don't make ass of your company, like show value and then you'll get value. I love it, man. Brilliant way to end it. So uh, partnerships is for the bold and give first. And I appreciate that. Look, honestly, it's been a great conversation. We'll have you back on again. I appreciate the insights. Uh, Folks want to connect with you. Where do they find you on the internet? How do they get in touch? Uh, Just LinkedIn. Hit me up. Jared Fuller, J-A-R-E-D-F-U-L-L-E-R. And then uh, partnerhacker.com for all the content on partnering.